Hey everyone, Mass Transit 8 has been released, and with it, there's some great new features. Now, I did a previous video on upgrading a, a sample that had been written for Mass Transit 7 to Mass Transit 8, and we went through a lot of that. I'm going to pick that sample back up today, and I'm going to show you one of the great new things that Mass Transit 8 enables support for open telemetry. So, open telemetry is kind of an open standard. It's evolved a lot, and it's it's taken a while to get there. Um, but Mass Transit 8 fully supports it out of the box. We move to the latest activity source components that are part of the .NET uh, runtime. And it's really cool how we can do this. We're going to be using Jaeger to do it. You know, and I kind of teased this out with a couple of screenshots in Twitter a month ago. But now I'm going to kind of show it. I'm also going to put this sample on GitHub finally. So it really gives you kind of a look at it. And so you can kind of see the code base behind it. So let's kind of jump in. First, I've got the code. As you can see, Mass Transit 8.0, no develop, no pre-release, no pre-release packages. Um, and then I'm still using .NET 5 on this project. I didn't move to 6 because I didn't want to rebuild all the Docker images. Um, but I've also added this open telemetry exporter Jaeger. So I'm going to use Jaeger for the visualization because I, it's easy and I can run it with Jaeger all in one inside Docker. So my Docker Compose, it's a big one. It's I'm running Postgres because I need a database for my saga for this particular sample. I'm running RabbitMQ because I love RabbitMQ. Everybody knows it. No joke about it. I have this service that's running a state machine. I'm overriding the connection string to tell it to use Postgres inside there. So that's cool. I'm telling it the transport is RabbitMQ. There's a lot of things you can do with environment variables with mass transit version 8 configuration uh, just by doing some of the options things and binding it to config. I also have an API that lets me kind of simulate from the UI the transactions, but I'm also going to show you a test console that I created to show it kind of putting a whole bunch of transactions through the system. So let's kind of jump in. The, the configuration and the startup of the project, let's start with the service. So the service is using just a program CS, it's a worker, and I'm configuring serial log, and then I just have this configure open telemetry extensions, add open telemetry. This is just an extension method I created. It wraps up all the open telemetry stuff. So SDK, create tracer provider builder. I'm putting my service name in here, so I have a source name in Jaeger. And all I had to do, if you already are using Jaeger or any open telemetry, I just add the source mass transit. That's it, done. That's the only real change. The rest of this is just bone stock set up for open telemetry to export to Jaeger. And I'm running Jaeger in a Docker container as well, so all those ports are wired up. Um, beyond that, it's a standard host builder. I'm doing some stuff to apply migrations to the database on startup if they don't exist, so that's always fun. Uh, and then my host builder. You know, I'm using Postgres as the database, getting my connection string so that if it's overridden, I can use that. Um, a number of different components we have in here. RabbitMQ transport options is a built-in type. It's built into mass transit. It has you know, a variety of different things. It does goofy things like if it's a container, it assumes RabbitMQ versus localhost. But then it just puts some defaults in it. These can be overridden in the uh, app settings JSON, which right here, I've just put them as localhost guest guest to kind of show them. And here we can see my connection string. I'm also doing some endpoint config for how many can put the prefetch count I want on those endpoints. Basic just settings setup stuff. You can look in the sample if you want to see the details of that. I'm using Entity Framework for this because I'm on .NET 5. It's using Entity Framework 5. If I jump to Entity, if I jump to .NET 6, it's going to use Entity Framework 6. But I'm using Entity Framework 5 here. There's breaking changes between the two, and now the single Entity Framework core package. If you're on .NET 5 or lower, it supports the older version. If you're on .NET 6, it requires the EF Core 6 version, which you would run anyway if you're on .NET 6. Sorry, it's just the way it is. You only do so many deployment options. Um, as we discussed previously, there's no add mass transit hosted service anymore. We're configuring the mass transit host options. And I wanted to wait till start because I'm running a service here and I want the bus to be ready to rock. So everything's good there. So that's kind of that. And again, you can dig on it. Like I said, I've got just a simple configuration for the open telemetry, which is the key thing I want to go off here. But, you know, other stuff that's in place, you know, there's a state machine in here. There's a number of different things. The sample's, you know, going to be linked in the description so you can take a look at it. It'll be on GitHub, the Mass Transit GitHub org. It's already there, actually. So you can look at it in advance if you want. Um, and then my Docker files are just standard Docker files. I'm putting some stuff into Docker, restoring packages, and then doing a release build, publishing it, 
usual type stuff, ASP.NET 5.0. Um, great. So I have the sample already running. You can see that I've run some test transactions through before. This is just the log output of the various containers running. Uh, if, I do a, if I do a Docker PS, I can see that I have the service, I have Jaeger tracing running, I have the sample dispatcher API, which is just the, the UI that lets me submit some transactions. And let's go ahead and try to do that as a refresher. So if I look at the sample UI, I can put a transaction ID. And what this does is it, it, it allows me to submit a request and a response, and it will correlate the two back together through the backend processing of whatever component handled it. So I'm just going to say that my transaction ID is test12345. I'm going to pass the initial request. I can see that I get back this initial request. It was picked up by First National and routed off to that service. Now I'm going to come in with the response to that, and I'm going to execute that one. You can see that it's correlating the initial request back to that new response. You can see that I have a knit request, last response, all of it's there, handled by First National. So that's when I'm posting it through the UI. Now, what does that look like when I go into Jaeger? So Jaeger has a UI on it, and if I do a search, like let's search for the API, I can see that I just, those requests I made are right there. You know, I have service one, you can see all the different dispatch. You can see when the initial dispatch receive came in, what timestamp it was, how long it took, you know, what contracts were, all the request ID, message ID. There's some common headers like messaging, conversation ID, destination, all that stuff is there. The operation in this case is a receive. There's kind of rules for how messaging is supposed to be represented in here, and I've tried to follow those. Um, I may not be perfect, but you know, I do what I can. Um, but you can see that this message came into the dispatch request queue. It was a receive. It was processed by a consumer, and I can see which consumer processed it, the dispatch request consumer. If I come down here, I can see that it then sent that off to the first national request queue because it routed it based on that first national routing key. It was then received by that service and processed. And then it was actually sent, the response was actually sent back to that response address. So you can see how it was sent back. The destination address was the bus that had the request client that ran. So it responded back to that API. You can see that the API, a completely different service, but reporting to the same Jaeger instance, pulled that data in, has the transaction ID, all that fun stuff is tied together. You got a great map of good tasty stuff here. I think it's awesome. If we expand this out, shrink this out, shrink this out, shrink this out, shrink this out, all these little things. You can see the time frame, how long stuff took. The state machine took a little longer to correlate the response back. Great times. This was the request. This was the this was the update of the request completed because again, you can see what it processed. This was the send to the exchange. Then it gets routed to the queue and the queue is receiving it, but you're still tied together with all the correlation IDs. So all that stuff is great. Um, and that's the transaction state. So that was the response. This was the request. Both of those are in there. You can see how the response actually goes through the state machine to correlate to the previous one, routes off to the initial responder, handles that initial response, and completes the transaction state. And you can actually, I believe you can even see in here, let's see here, that's the receive, that's the process, Oh yeah, begin state was response in flight and the end state was response complete. So you even see the state machine begin and end states when it processes those events. So super cool detail. I think it's awesome. You can see a lot of this stuff with App Insights as well, but this is Jaeger. It runs local. It's good times. It's fun. So that's kind of the sample. That's how the open telemetry works. That was nothing to do. I mean, it was just configuring the Jaeger exporter and open telemetry and adding mass transit as a source. To me, that's that's just awesome. I could come in here and I could hammer this with some additional data. Let's say I just come in and start pounding it. I'm doing 10 requests a second to this service. If I come in here and do a refresh, I won't see anything on API, but if I go to the service, because again, I'm not going through the service at this point, we can see in-flight transactions that haven't finished. Nine is the magic number. We know that when we get nine, it's done. You can see our total transaction times are like 21 milliseconds end-to-end, -end, including the Saga processing. So Pretty fast, pretty powerful. You can, you can pretty much tell which one's a request because it's like two milliseconds, four milliseconds versus the actual ones that go through the state machine, which is a little longer. I'm running Postgres locally and I'm, I'm hitting it kind of hard. So not hard, but you know what I mean? I find that Postgres locking is a little weird. Um, I'm going to try some different options on isolation levels to kind of see how that works. But 
Key point is that I can see the visibility. I know where my bottlenecks are. Clearly this is the bottleneck. I can go and look in these other things and it's uh, pretty cool. So Mass Transit version eight, it's available from the usual nougats. The docs are updated. There's an upgrade guide. If you jump into the website, you can see, go into upgrading. You can see version eight. It tells you all the different things to upgrade, what's changed, what's new about serialization, you know, how the hosted service has gone, different observers, how you can just register observers in the container. They get auto bound for you. A lot of cool things there. So give it a try. Check it out. Thanks for joining. Talk to you soon.